Today we're demonstrating um, a form of hormone replacement therapy where we use uh, bioidentical hormones. It just means that the chemistry structure of what your body makes and what uh, we're using uh, from a chemistry standpoint, it all looks the same. The carbons, hydrogens, all of that, the structure. Uh, but there's different forms of hormone replacement therapy. Uh, these are um, uh, pellet hormone replacement therapy uh, that are compounded. Um, we use estradiol, which is what the ovary naturally makes, and testosterone. The ovary also makes uh, testosterone. So estrogen controls hot flashes, vaginal dryness, insomnia, night sweats, uh, mood fluctuation that happens in the menopause or if you've had the ovaries removed uh, during a surgical procedure. Uh, the ovaries also produce a certain amount of testosterone, uh, which is more commonly known as a male hormone, but it also provides um, um, help and relief with uh, fatigue. Um, and half of the school agrees that it helps with the uh, libido or desire for sex, and the other half says, ah, we're not quite convinced. Uh, but there's different forms of hormone replacement therapy, pills, patch creams, different things. Um, the pellets, in my opinion, are the closest thing to a, an ovary that there's ever going to be uh, because it lasts a long time. It secretes uh, steady levels of hormone in the bloodstream and it lasts about four to six months. So all of the other ones last about a day, three days, the patches. So this is the next closest thing to an ovary that we have. So basically, the patient comes in. Uh, in our clinic, um, I think checking labs is unnecessary because the patient is the only test I need and she'll start having symptoms and notify us and it's time for the hormones. Um, in the summertime, about four months because the metabolism is faster. Uh, in the wintertime, about six months. Uh, but we get, we get a call, it's time for the hormones. Uh, uh, we order them and then the patient comes in. Um, we've already prepped the area, we did a local block, um, we already made a tiny about two to three millimeter incision and now we're just going to place uh, the pellets. <clears throat> Financially when you compare it to what an insurance company covers and what the copay is and all of that stuff, um, this works out to be about the same, if not a better, better, better deal. So basically, we use a little kind of tube uh, that gets passed underneath the skin. Um, she's already been um, sitting for about five minutes with the local anesthesia. It kind of looks uh, unusual, but uh, the patients usually don't complain about it. So we, um, we usually go a little bit lower. Some people place the pellets. Uh, in the back around the buttocks uh, or the butt. Uh, from a surgical standpoint, I don't like that approach because it's more of a dirtier area and it's an active area, so it tends to hurt more back there. We usually use an older uh, C-section incision, surgical incision down here, but uh, she was saying that the seat belt was bothering her. Uh, she works a lot uh, and drives a lot, so we chose a old laparoscopic incision that's higher than what I usually go but you can place them basically anywhere. So we uh, kind of tunnel underneath the um, skin. Um, the pellets are really kind of small. Uh, this is the larger one, this is testosterone. Uh, so we pass it, it, place it in the little tube. The other one which is uh, estradiol is even smaller. And so we just kind of place it in the tube, kind of guide it to where it needs to be without crushing it, and that is it. So it's pretty straightforward. Um, the only disadvantage, I guess you would say, is um, it requires a an incision. Sometimes there might be a little bit of bruising, uh, but as far as the results and how often you have to have it done, how often you have to be buying them, 
um, and how effective it is in the body, uh, what I see is that the patients really, really, really like um, this form of hormone replacement therapy. Now, once we're happy with uh, no bleeding or anything, replace kind of a little liquid. Uh, we use it commonly in surgery uh, to help uh, the sticky little steri strip stick better. You just kind of let it dry a little bit. So some places put stitches in and I've never been a fan of that. Last thing a patient wants to deal with is having to have a stitch removed or whatever. So uh, it's so small it would probably just actually heal on its own. But these are the little strips that we use in surgery and so I just put the skin back together. And then uh, put a little band-aid. And that's it. The only thing we ask is uh, not to uh, put the incision underwater for about a week. Uh, but that's it as far as uh, pellet hormone replacement therapy.